All right, so this is going to be the last video in this uh, React Redux app building project. And the only thing I did um, in between this video and last video is kind of go through, clean up a little bit of the CSS, clean up this kind of part at the top here with the header. Um, I added some text up here just to explain stuff better. I added like just some nice little helpful hints. I added discuss. I added Google Analytics to this. I added a little copyright here on the about page. I, I put some more information. Um, but other than that, I didn't do a whole lot. And really, the uh, React starter um, project, it has a lot to it. So I can do npm run build, and it's going to create an optimized production build for me in the build directory. And that build directory is exactly what I can deploy to production. It's pretty nice. So it's running through and doing something with Webpack right now. It's creating that build. And then you're going to see if I go into build, I can run HTTP server, make sure everything looks good. Uh, and it does seem to. So that's all good. So everything's functioning correctly and whatnot. Um, so I, I just made sure the build is good before I'm going to push it. And then the next thing is, I'm just going to inspect the build a little bit. And you can see I've got the CSS files, I've got the JavaScript files, I've got a service worker, the index, and I've got all these images. The one thing I'm a little bit concerned about is the images, so I'll go and check, check out these images. Um, but it looks like they're pretty small. I don't know if I can get them any smaller. I did go through with image magic and shrink a lot of these, so like a lot of them are less than 10K. There are some exceptions that are kind of large, like this is on the about page. This is a little big, but other than that, they're all pretty small. So it should be fine to serve these out of my S3 bucket, and then I shouldn't get too much of a bandwidth hit. So um, let's talk about the actual configuration for deployment. Now that our project is all ready and good to push up, uh, what I did was buy a domain called fpvbuildcalc.com since it's the build calculator for FPV quadcopters. Figure that's a good domain name. Um, and I set up two things in the DNS records. I set up a forwarder, which is a URL redirect to redirect um, all like just fpvbuildcalc.com to www.fpvbuildcalc.com. So I'm doing I'm doing a redirect with no subdomain to be to go to www. And the reason I did that is so that um, I can use a C name on the www because if you don't, so normally if you don't do this, uh, you won't be able to set MX records if you're doing a C name because you can't you can't C name the base domain uh, if you want to use MX records. Um, I don't necessarily want to use MX records because I don't really need to set email up on it, but in, I'm future proofing it. And then what I did is set the C name on www to this F pv build calc bucket on amazon um, and the trick with amazon is you need to make it so that the bucket name is exactly the name of the domain you want to serve the um, project under so that's all there really is to the in dns configuration two records one is a redirect from no domain to be www and the other is a c name for www to point to the bucket that i'm serving under then when you go to s3 you can see I'm in my S3 buckets. I created a new bucket. It's pretty simple. You just create the bucket with the name of the uh, DNS um, or domain name that you want it to be. So in this case, it's www.fpvbuildcalc.com. And then you'll go through setting up properties and everything. So when I actually go in here, I have already pushed the site up. I didn't want to do it live on the video because I, I thought I would run into problems. But um, I already pushed this up. But all you really have to do is go into properties and do static web hosting. So you need to turn static web hosting on and make it point to index.html. And then this is your endpoint. That's where I got that C name record. So that's the C name record I used. Um, and then the permissions is the other thing you need to set up. So I actually have a bucket policy on here to allow everything. And there's a really good article it's down actually linked in the readme to this project and it's about deploying create react app to s3 and it goes through the bucket policy you want to add 
Uh, the other thing it goes through is how to set up the AWS CLI because if you don't do that, you're going to have to upload files individually, which is just stupid. So don't <laughs> set up the CLI. Um, then you can do it in one line. And in fact, I even did this. So now I can say AWS S3 LS, AWS S3 LS, and I can, it lists out the buckets. So now I have a direct connection between AWS on my command line. And if I want to use the, the command to push it, I have a sync script in here and it just runs build and then it runs sync this build between the build directory and then my bucket. Um, it's really pretty nice. So uh, that's all there is to it. You Essentially, you create some security credentials and then you run AWS configure after you install the AWS CLI tools and it'll ask you for a secret key and it'll ask you for a uh, access key. Um, after that, it'll ask you for region information, which you don't really even need to put, but that's all there is to it. Um, so let's go ahead and check this out. Let's see if it works. So I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run uh, npm run sync here, and you're gonna see it's gonna build so now every time I change a file and I wanna push the site up live to the website, I can just run npm run sync and that'll deploy it because it'll build it. And then AWS is going to, uh, interesting that AWS is not. All right, so let's just run this manually. Yeah, so it's going through and it's pushing up all those files. You can see the entire site is gonna be 3.9 megabytes. And most of that is because of these uh, um, map, this map.js file, I think, which is not even really necessary. Uh, so yeah, we're in good shape here. Yeah, that's the one that's 2.7 megabytes. That can be deleted, but it, it could be helpful for debugging. It's not gonna get loaded by default though, unless you open up the debug tools. So uh, now when I go to um, fpvbuildcalc.com, it's going to redirect to www, and then here's the site. It's going to be served. So we successfully deployed the site, and it's successfully redirecting to www. Uh, Discuss is loading, and everything should be showing up in Google Analytics. Um, so that's it. That was start to finish, building a React app from a generator. Um, going through, adding Redux, adding a UI framework, and then finally deploying it to a static S3 bucket. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from this.